Everybody, thanks for having me out here. I'm gonna say it's probably one of the most relaxed, great groups I've been around speaking in my career. I've been doing this now for six years. I've been speaking at stages like JP Morgan, Mental Health of America, National Conference. I've been all around doing stuff like this. Myself, I overcame an addiction, several addictions actually. I overcame an alcohol addiction, I overcame a painkiller addiction, and I overcame an addiction of like this being super depressed. Okay? About six years ago, I was literally one week away from being homeless. One week. Played the NFL for six years, made a lot of money, built a very successful construction business, lost it all. But what I've learned from my rise back about sales is that, guys and ladies, sales is only about really one thing, getting people to like you. If people like you, they're going to buy from you. Plain and simple. If you get to build the trust with them, they get to know that you see them as an actual valuable person, not just a transactional sale, you will get the business. Okay? Hit the button for me there, Mike. <coughs> the two biggest traits in sales, two biggest traits, consistency and grit. What is consistency? Doing everything on a daily basis to represent your brand, to get out in front of people to do business. Consistency doesn't take talent, it just takes will. Can you consistently get out in front of people and get where you want to be? That is the question. That's what consistency is all about. Grit is when you get knocked down or when you get told no, can you get up? Can you actually rise up off the pavement? Like I said, five and a half years ago, I'm a week from being homeless, or one week from being homeless. When I finally got myself together, I could have literally stayed down and said, you know what, the NFL gave me a hand. I you know what, they took care of me for four months. Okay, I got my bills paid for four months. I can sit here and just, just be easy like this and do nothing. Or I can get my big ass off the couch, put the middle lights down, and actually go and get myself to be where I want to be as a successful business person. That's what it was. It was really that simple. I only had one chance to make it work. If I squandered that chance, I would not be here today. Wouldn't be doing it. And sales is all about getting people to understand you can help them with their vision. Okay, next slide. One of the greatest salesmen of our times. Started a company, kicked out of the company, brought back to the company. Literally. He was somebody that literally told people, if you want to be the best, you have to create the value for the customers. Apple has had an immensely successful business in sales. I would probably say 90% of phones in the world are by Apple. Okay, the business. He cornered the market. Next slide. This is what Steve Jobs said. My job as a CEO is to give my employees a safe environment to succeed at sales. Now, what does that mean? Everybody on the team may not agree with each other. We were just talking about that, Sarah. You have one parenting style, your husband has another parenting style. Can you all come together and actually find a common ground to move forward and raise your daughter? Same thing with my, with my wife. We had the same issue when my daughter was about two. Now I've learned to work with her and be able to successfully raise our children. It's the same thing in sales. Can you all come together as a staff can you come together and work out any problems, any differences? Your job as, a, as executive, your job as an executive is to make everybody feel safe so they can talk about the problems, okay? What are the issues? What are you guys struggling with? That is what it's all about. Next, National Football League. That looks real good. All of you, girl. Okay? Yeah. 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 All right. Yeah. 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 Now, here's the thing. Can we get a screenshot? Now, here's the thing. All right, it's my little big. That's my new background. Here's what y'all want. Here's the thing. What do y'all, what do they both want? They both want leaders to help them succeed at their brand. I played in the NFL for six years around guys like, I know some Patriot fans in here. Yep, yep, yep. I've known Bill Belichick. Okay. Met him several times. Played against him. Lost every single time. I love Bill. I don't know about all that. Uh, I like <laughs> Bill. I like Bill a lot. I like him at all. I like him a lot. I but I can't say, oh, yeah, no, that's what I will say. I respect, I respect him. Yeah. He, is the, he is the third winningest coach in NFL history. 
Okay? When I met him, he was fired from the Browns. <laughs> Who gets fired from the Browns? <laughs> a lot of people. Both of you, Well, <laughs> 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 head coaches. Head coaches. <laughs> well, the Bengals should have fired more recently. Tom doesn't know, but that hasn't yes. happened either. But the point I'm trying to make is, is that these two brands, they are going to thrive off great leadership. Okay? That is what it's about. That's what it is. If you all in this room can come together and strategize about how to succeed at sales and how to actually connect with people, you will do very, very well in business. But the way to do that is have these type of meetings and dialogue where you're actually open and honest with each other. And that's what happened to me, guys. When I lost my business, I was the worst person at listening to others. I thought I knew everything. I didn't allow any thoughts, any inclusion, any ideas. I shut them all out because I thought I knew it all. Looking back at it, I didn't know anything. So learn from my mistakes and help you succeed at sales. Okay? Next. So this is my brother who was six foot nine, 370 pounds in the eighth grade. Okay? My brother is a Hall of Fame football player, played for the Ravens for 12 years. Okay? He's considered the best left tackle to ever play in the NFL. What is this? This is my father who raised us by himself as two, as a single dad. Single dad. He said, you know what? I am going to step up and make sure my boys lead people and are successful at life because they're going to respect women, they're going to respect themselves, and they're going to get out there. And if something goes wrong in life, they're going to get up and try again. So my brother got 132 scholarship offers for Division I football. I got zero. None. My offer came. Oh, that's his phone. That's his hot spot. That's awesome. Uh, <laughs> my brother ended up getting 132. I got zero. Okay, <clears throat> next slide. I got one offer to go to Howard University, Washington, D.C. Just one. But I tell you all the time to succeed in life, all you need is one opportunity. That's it. All you need is one. Went to Howard, played football for five years with a four year starter, ended up getting drafted. Next slide. 2003, I was drafted to the National Football League. What did I have to do? I had to sell myself to coaches. Guys, I had to sell them that I was a good person, that I could create value outside of the football arena. Going to different meetings, going to the community, creating value. Guys, that is one of the biggest things you need to do to succeed at sales is create value. If you're creating value for people, you will get their business. If you're all about yourself, you will get nowhere in sales. So I had to sell myself to 32 head coaches about what I could do on the football field and off. And this is the man that took me and my opportunity. Jack Del Rio, Jacksonville Jaguar head coach, okay, head coach of the Oakland Raiders before he got let go. Jack was the, that's awesome. Is that, is that you? No, it's his. It's his hot spot. He's helping us move faster. Uh, you can edit that. Um, and, <laughs> Jack was extra, extraordinarily good at selling people in the community to come and support the Jaguars. We were a horrible football team on the field, unfortunately. We only won one game in, t in my first year. But what did Jack do? Jack was really good at always smiling in front of people, getting out there, shaking hands, creating value. I remember it was like it was yesterday. 2003, we were playing 2004, actually, was January, <coughs> playing New England Patriots my rookie year. Jack was, oh, it was a loss. Oh, it was a big loss. <laughs> we're not, we're not going to go into how bad a loss. But I remember, gallery, be quiet back there. But I remember, here's the thing. I remember, man, it was Tom Brady's, one of his first games, being on a football field. And I remember, we were like, who the hell is this bony-ass dude out here throwing touchdowns? Left right? He beat us by like 40 points. And what we saw is that Del Rio, even though we had a really crappy season, he was able to keep moving forward as a coach. But what I saw in Tom Brady was someone that was going to succeed at selling in life. Brady Miss made more money off the football field than on. You know, and, and endorsements, selling himself, creating value, getting people to give him money. Why? Because he has a winning attitude. And he always is representing the Patriots and himself in a highly successful manner. That is also part of sales. How do you look when you approach people? 
Are you relating to that person you're trying to sell to? We had a conversation today where every time I go speak, I wear a power suit. But he said, Marcus, don't wear a power suit here. <laughs> How awkward would that have felt right now? Oh, it would have been, oh, been horrible. I'd be, like, I'd be like, really? And here's the thing, though, guys. That's going to make not only me feel uncomfortable, but you feel uncomfortable as well. Because I'm not connecting with you. If you don't connect with somebody and relate to them in a manner where they feel it's genuine, you are always going to be looked at as an outsider. Every single time. Okay? But it's really about how do you put yourself, and I love how you said how would that have felt for me. On both sides, it would have been very awkward. So I wanted to thank him for saving me from that awkward ass moment. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. it, it went a long way. Next slide. Guys, this is how I felt when I left the NFL. It was an empty locker room. And this is when everything in my life started to go downhill. Alcohol was consumed at a high, high level way high level. Nice. Painkillers were consumed at a high level. Yeah. Everything. <laughs> full full yeah. tattoo sleeves. Which when we're done recording this so we can edit this out. Uh, mm -hmm. When I'm done talking, when he's videoing, I'm going to my t-shirt to do our second half of the interview because that's who I am. But when I'm selling myself to corporate America, mm -hmm. when they see this, they see, okay, this guy's professional. So I have to sell myself to a certain audience, but who I really am is gonna be myself as well. You have to learn how to put out the persona and the image that you want for the client that you want. That is big. If you want the client, you have to be able to connect with them. If you can't connect with them, they won't buy from you. It's just never gonna happen. They're gonna look at you as an outsider and say, I wanna give my money to somebody I feel is like me. Not someone I, I cannot relate with, okay? <coughs> this is me. I built an eight-figure construction business in Baltimore City in my late 20s. I was extremely good at selling the brand. Didn't know a damn thing about construction. <laughs> Nothing. I couldn't do a takeoff. I couldn't know what the price of stone was. I didn't, know how to, I didn't know how to map out my utilities, my stormwater sewer line. I couldn't price jack shit. But what could I do? I could go into a meeting with people who didn't relate to me, 50-year-old plus Caucasian America, me in my late 20s, African-American male, with my double tattoo sleeves, walking to the office. But what did I do? I gave them the value. I was a minority contractor, and I knew that minorities had to get a certain percentage of the work in Baltimore City with federally funded contracts. So I played the card I was dealt. And I went from being a struggling athlete who transitioned to a multi-million dollar business owner in his late 20s. Because I figured out how to sell my brand. So what does that tell you? Figure out how to connect with people you will get where you want to be. But you have to do it genuinely. And it takes time, it takes innovation, it takes consistent marketing, and it takes guys being told no and not letting that get you down. You will not get every business deal you go after. I don't get that today, but it doesn't slow me down. Because if you let it slow you down and you don't have a pipeline for new business, Eventually, it's going to catch up to you, and you have no business to look at, even to pursue on any level. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. You have to continuously be building the pipeline, and we're going to talk about that a little bit later on. Okay, next slide. Guys, I was the largest minority contractor in the state for two years. The summer of 2012, I stopped having meetings like this. I stopped letting people give me advice. I stopped letting people tell me how to give come better, how to grow and connect. And that was my reality. I went bankrupt. Everything I owned in 90 days was gone because I was just not an effective leader. Now, ladies, imagine this. Imagine you meeting me three months before I go bankrupt. That was my wife's reality. We met on Match.com in July of 2012. She winked at me first. I said, whatever you got, you asked for. I didn't even have to wink at me. 
we got together and then six months later she left her property came to live with me and i was bankrupt and broke i sold her fortunately on how to connect with me and it worked but then i did a really bad job of continuing to sell the business because i got so focused i was at the <laughs> top of the chain instead of working harder and building that pipeline continue to have those sales lead to more revenue I stopped having a pipeline. When you stop having a pipeline, you literally are starting to die slowly but surely. Because when you have success, remember this saying, guys, when it comes to success, okay, complacency is the cancer of reaching optimal success. I'll say it one more time. Complacency is the cancer to reaching optimal success. When you are having success and you stop and get complacent and don't keep pushing, you will eventually die a slow death. Because you're not growing, you're regressing. And if you keep regressing, you are going to eventually die out. It's just human nature. So guys, I went bankrupt. Broke, had nothing, nobody helped me, family turned on me, I got addicted to alcohol again. Painkillers again, depression again, and this was my reality. I was a part. I was a full-time football coach, and then next slide. I was a part-time janitor. Guys, in 2013, in the in the in the fall, I made eight dollars and twenty-five cents an hour, pushing a broom, spraying pledge on tables, wiping it off, throwing the trash out. You know what? I thought that was probably one of the lowest points of my life. I worked my ass off. I had a job, but it was so demoralizing because I was better than that. But I just made some mistakes. But you know what? That was not the low point of my life. The next slide is. You're probably thinking, what the hell is that? Milk. 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 You know what this is, though? This was my, let me ask you all a question. Who here knows their life-changing moment that made them become who they are? Do you all know what that moment is in your life? You ever think about it? Stop. This is my life-changing moment. So think about it while you kind of later on think about what is that moment that made you get yourself together, that made you realize that you need to change and become a better person. This is mine. In the fall of that year, 2013, taking the trash out, 3 a.m., someone's spoiled milk got on my bare skin when my glove ripped. <clears throat> Took the trash out, dumped it, sat in the curb and cried and said, what the heck has happened to my life? Where am I? What am I? What am I doing? I have a college degree, make money in the NFL, make money as a businessman, succeed in sales. What happened to me? And you know what happened to me, guys? I started feeling sorry for myself every single day. And when you start feeling sorry for yourself, it is nowhere you're going to go but down. It's the only place you can go. You can't go up if you feel sorry for yourself. Okay? So, I ended up saying, all right, I'm going to get my life together. I'm going to start pushing forward. I'm going to go back to selling a brand. Didn't really have one. I said, screw it. I don't have a brand. But hit the next slide. So I decided to make a brand. I ain't got nothing to sell. Shit, I'll make something up. Wrote a book. Became a bestseller in two days. Two days. What did I do? I just took my life story and wrote it in a book. My autobiography. And what did it do? I realized a lot of people had that spoiled milk moment. A lot of people had lost a lot of money in their life. A lot of people were on top and then going right back down to the bottom. So I decided to stop being, everybody in society wants to say, you know what, I haven't made a mistake. Oh, I'm perfect. I don't do anything wrong. Bullshit. Bullshit. We all have had those moments. So I decided to be honest and come clean with mine. And what did it do? That gave me the brand to sell. Next slide. This is me speaking for Home Depot on their national stage. Oh, you can open it's all good. On their national stage in Atlanta. <laughs> Guys, 
One more time. So I went from a janitor to a best-selling author to a national keynote speaker. Okay? I, I took my mess of a life and made a powerful message. That's what I did. I took the shit, I took the crap, I took the trash, I took the spoiled milk, and I put it into a powerful message. And I say, you know what? If you want to judge me, that's okay, because your closet is not going to be straight either. And what I found, a lot of people like, Marcus, thank you for coming clean, because it's made me now want to come clean with my life. And I built the brand. But here's the thing, guys. I built a brand, but now I have to sell the brand. That's the thing. Again, I didn't get I didn't get to the top and just stay there. I had to keep going. So I'm going to start talking a little bit about some things. But now, here's something I want you to learn. Leadership helps you drive sales. There are four major components in a business of becoming a successful brand. Operations or productions, HR, sales, marketing. Okay, I'm going to tell you some people that were on this side with my first business and on this side today. This business, I had a guy named Ryan and a lady named Dawn. Ryan told me, Marcus, we are not doing well in the field. We're selling a lot of valuable product where our work is not, it's, it's shit. It's it, the people, it's not getting done. I need better people. I said, man, I don't have, Ryan, I don't have time for this, man. Go do you. You know what I did? I hyped him up. Oh, you're the man, right? Go take care of business. Da, 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 da. The company basically went from the top to the bottom. That was the beginning of the end. Because I didn't have people like yourself in this field who were quality people. Today, if Dawn tells me to do something with quality people, say hi, Matt. My video guy, quality people. Operations, you have to have, that's awesome. You have to have the quality people to put out quality products. So the takeaway is quality people. HR, I had a girl named Kim, had my wife. I would hire anybody came through the door with my company back in business, anybody. You want a job, application, you were hired. That was the biggest thing wrong to do. We now vet people, okay? Go through a process, sales, be advisable. No one could tell me anything when I had my first business. Today, my speaker manager, my wife, my team tells me something. I'm advisable and coachable. So that helps me sell a hell of a lot better. And guys, in this one right here, be innovative. Mm -hmm. Look for new ways to connect with people. I'm going to give you some tips on that because that is how you sell a business. Okay, next slide. So here's my challenge to you, okay? Next slide, I'm sorry, Mike. Are you willing to do what it takes to increase sales productivity to elevate yourself and your brand? Yes. Are you willing to do it? Mm -hmm. Okay? I'm now going to give you some strategies to do it, okay? This has worked for me in my business. Ladies and gentlemen, sales is all the same. Are you willing to put in the work to get to that point of having a consistent business that people know you, they respect the brand, you have the NFL here, all behavioral in here, health here. They get to know you as the top of your brand. That's the question. Next. Ways to create a healthy sales environment. Number one, create the why. Anybody know what that means? Anybody have any idea what create the why means? Anybody? Yes. Tell so why you do what you do, not what you do. The very, Simon Sinek thing. Very good. Anybody else? You're, as, what's your, I'm sorry, what's your name again? Jessica. Jessica, that's very good. Anybody else? It's like the mission statement. Thank you. It's the vision. Ladies and gentlemen, whoever here hears the saying, I have a dream. I don't want to say Dr. King's speech, but whoever hears the word dream. Okay, y'all hear that a lot? Mm -hmm. I'm going to say this to you right now. To me, dreams are, I don't want to say pointless. I don't like them. You know why? When you sleep, you dream. Or when you daydream, means you're not focused. I like to have the word, what is your vision? What is your goal? Because you, when you are focused and laser in on a vision, that's where you're gonna get it done. What is the vision? What is the why? What is the reason that you guys are sitting in this room today? Is it to go out and play basketball, which is always fun? <laughs> is it to, to sit there and have some mo's, which is good food? 
Or are you here to actually create a purpose? Like you said, are you here to actually get some tips on how to sell yourself and the company better? That's what I want to know. Create the why, the vision, okay? I have another saying. People say, well, I'm motivated. Motivation to me is garbage. It's garbage. Think about this. Motivation comes from the word what? Motive. Which means I want you to do something because I want you to do it. I say the word inspire, which means I breathe life into you. That means you want to do it for yourself. So it's from the inside to the outside. So I tell you all the time, be inspirational, not motivational. Okay? Communicate effectively. That's this, that's this, you know, that's the old school rule. If you're not talking to each other, if you're not working on a plan, you're not gonna get any better. Plain and simple. Okay? Build trust. How do you build trust? There's three things you have to do to build trust. Number one is competency. Can you get the job done like you say you can? Okay? Reliability. Can you get the job done in the time frame you say you can get it done? Okay? And then have each other's back. Be each other's partner, friend, confidant, and work together. If you can work together, as a business, as a vision, as a brand, you can make anything happen. You can sell anything to anybody, anything. But if you don't have any of these things in line in, in your order in your house, you will never succeed in sales because everything's gonna be disorganized and out of whack. Just like when I lost my business, all this was gone, it's gone. That's how I ended up almost homeless. So again, you can sell anything as long as you have the ability to create that why. Next. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to talk now about prospecting, turning prospects into clients, and retaining your clients. Okay? Number one, identify your prospects. What do you think I mean by identify your prospects? Anybody got anything? Pretty self-explanatory vertical. It is, but, it's, but it, it is self-explanatory, but you have to think more about it. What is the number one way you think you can identify prospects? Look number one our, way. What's that? Can we look at our current clients? or? Thank you. Look at your current clients. It's about 70% of people forget to look at their existing client base to help them get new clients. Referrals. Spin-off work. That's what it's about. Identify who are you looking for. And that was another way to find clients. Social media. Who here has a LinkedIn account? Who here uses their LinkedIn account? <laughs> Just Mike. How do y'all think I got here? LinkedIn. 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 Mike hit me up on LinkedIn. Guys, you know what happens? I post a lot of video content on LinkedIn. Mike looks at it, Mike follows me, Mike comments on it, I respond back to him. You all can find a lot of clients on LinkedIn. You can find the doctors, the lawyers, the business owners that have those people that those people need help. Guys, when I hire people for my construction company, about 80% of my staff had addiction problems. Either alcohol, narcotics, because that, unfortunately, in construction, that's all the kind of jobs those guys can get. I was paying those guys $22 an hour to work for me, though. They were getting paid great wages. But a lot of times, those guys had problems at home. They would, after work, they would go get, you know, they would go, you know, get painkillers. They would go get uh, narcotics. They would go get alcohol. Because that was the lifespan that they knew. It was a, it was a, a, it was a never-ending, vicious cycle. So again, go to LinkedIn. Find different ways to connect with people. Find ways to identify clients. Connect. Guys, connection. When you reach out to me on LinkedIn, what did I do? Thanks, Mike, for saying the comment. We got a little, you know, a whole little thing going. We were just talking about some business. He said, hey, Marcus, you remember just speaking on this topic? Like, what's the topic? Sales. That's what I do. That's how I got here. Ladies and gentlemen, that is how I get 85% of my clients is through LinkedIn. If you have a LinkedIn account and you're not using it, you are truly not maximizing your opportunity. It's a free service. So why don't people, let me ask you this question. Why doesn't people, why don't you guys use LinkedIn? 
I've been using it because of spam. I've gotten so much spam from it, I kind of just turned it off. And, yeah, I'm not really okay, what's your name, Miss Dog? Steve. Steve, here's what I'm going to tell you, man. I was just like you, right? Here's the thing. If you're trying to connect with clients, all you have to do is someone send you a bunch of bullshit is to say, you know, you can delete them and just kind of keep it moving. I had the same problem, okay? People will connect with me like, oh, Marcus, you're doing great work, great work. And I'd be like, thank you. And, I'd be, and they'd be like, oh, why don't you come sign for this, this, and this, and this, and this. And I'd be like, okay, I'm done. You're, you're gone. See you later. So you, ha you have the ability to say, you know what, man? I don't want to talk to you. You're not going to be here. You're not here to create any value for me. You're, I'm not, I don't need you. I'm not going to connect with you. I'm not going to take it any further. You hold the delete button. So if you don't like what they're saying, get rid of them. That's not being rude. That's just being real. You know what I mean? Anybody else? That's a good point, though. I was getting the same thing in the beginning. Anybody else? Why they don't use LinkedIn? Why don't you? You said you don't use it, so why don't you use LinkedIn? Um, I guess it's just never something I developed, and I'm more comfortable in other methods. What other methods do you use? <clears throat> um, well, our, a lot of our methods are like face-to-face. Mm -hmm. Marketing, mm -hmm. uh, working with the local community, mm -hmm. and just people that I already know. Mm -hmm. So um, I guess it's kind of a comfort thing. Like I'm it's a comfort. With what okay, I'm doing that's what I was looking for. It's a yeah. comfort thing, yeah. guys. Let me tell you something. The first time I keynote speak for somebody with the Boys and Girls Club, I was the worst freaking speaker ever. I sweated my ass off. I was nervous as hell. I was stumbling on my words. I said, um, and uh, the whole time. Yeah, it was pretty bad. The point I'm trying to make is, if I had never stepped out of the comfort zone of the box I was in to get where I am today, I'd still be back here. At some point, in order to achieve greatness, you have got to step out of your comfort zone. If you don't, you will always be, like this is, this is greatness right here, this is you right here, you will always be right about here. Always. Guys, I was not a great keynote speaker when I started out five and a half years ago. I literally got booed off a couple stages, to be honest with you. Okay? But it's cold. it is cold. You know what, though? People in society are cold. That's, you know, it is what it is. I mean, I'm like, you know what? I have to, but you have to have thick skin. Ladies and gentlemen, in sales, you better have some thick ass skin. You better have some thick ass skin. Because you're going to get told no a lot. <laughs> Steven, people yes. try to hit you up on some stuff, man. Yes. You're going to be like, yo, man, I'm good. Get your ass up out of here. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's a, <laughs> guys, people are so afraid to be rude. <laughs> guys, in, and here's the thing. In business, at some point, if people keep pushing you and pushing you and pushing you, you have to be rude. And say, you know what? What you're selling, I really appreciate it. I'm good. I don't want that product. I know it's a pain, you know, but you're like, well, it's cold, but that's life. But if you don't step out, I'm sorry, what's your name, man? Justin. Justin, if you don't step out of the comfort zone, man, you will always be right where you are, where you're in verse where you want to be. So says somebody who's telling you who's lived it, you have got to step out of that comfort zone. Anybody else? Why don't you use LinkedIn? I didn't use it because it's a whole other platform. I've got myself stretched on so many different uh, media types. I've been, like, I built a profile and stuff, but mm -hmm. I imagine like everything else, because it, it works a total different way than Facebook. You know? It does. How, how do you build your, how do you connect? I guess it's just lack of knowledge. I didn't know mm -hmm. how to utilize it. Okay, so let me ask you a question. Who is your primary type of client? And we have an exercise about this at, at the end of interactive activity. What is your perfect type of client that you look for? Business owner. Okay. Do you know that 90% of business owners are on LinkedIn? Yeah. That's where they go. Yeah, you're right. Facebook is the thing of the past to them. That's where they go to kind of, excuse the French, just dick around and put pictures on. <laughs> if they want to get business done, they go on LinkedIn. Okay? Guys, listen, I understand. I can relate to you. I am a six foot five and a half, 285 pound black dude who played in the NFL who has a double tattoo sleeve, tattoo on his collarbone, full back piece. I have to put myself in a different way on LinkedIn. It's a suit. It's a suit image. It's everything on my thing that I post are very etiquette thought out because this is how people who are business owners relate to me. Most NFL athletes think, oh, I'm a former NFL player. Oh, here I am, man. Hire my ass. Like, dude. Take the football field, champ. 
They don't owe you shit. They don't owe you nothing. If you want to be great in this business, you have to become fucking Wolverine. Be a fucking, just turn it on and adapt. When he gets pissed off, then blades come out. You have to set the tone so that if you want to be successful, man, you have to adapt to the environment. If you just told me business owners are your primary point of contact, you have got to be more active on LinkedIn. You have to. And just kind of put out there who you are, what you're doing, who you're looking, who you're looking to help. That's going to get the people's attention. And I'll talk about that a little bit. Guys, when you start connecting with people, don't go for the sale right away because that's what will get turned off. And we'll talk about that in a minute. Thank you. Create value. Anybody else know why they don't use LinkedIn? I mean, pretty much what he was just saying, you know what I mean? Like, it's, it, I just don't know the how to start, like, reaching out to these people or, like, what to post, when to post it. Like, okay. social media, I grew up. So here's a couple things, all right? Guys, on LinkedIn, you should post once a day, okay? It should be different content. It could be... Uh, a video about who you are, what you're doing for work. It could be a post about helping people who are trying to have gone through addiction issues. It could be talking about your ability to be a, an executive and how you're collaborating with other people to build a vision. Be unique. That's why I've gotten so much action off LinkedIn because I'm not the same guy that if you look at my LinkedIn page, you can go to it. It's not just like, you know, it's not just about football, about sports. it's a conglomerate of different things because people want to get to know you. Okay? You don't want to put everything out there, but put out the image that you want. That's the great thing about social media, guys. You control what goes out there. Okay? So do a good job of just posting about who you are your vision, your beliefs, your mission statement, and get people excited about you are actually trying to help others that are struggling with addictions. You're gonna get a lot of people to start hitting you up. Trust me, trust me, okay? Just start thinking about things in a different way. Connect with people. Number three, listen to people. Guys, do you know how many people, when they meet somebody new, they talk first and listen second. When I talk to you on the phone, Mike, what did I ask you? Tell me about what your issues are. Tell me about how can I help you and your brain. I didn't start spouting with you, hey man, I'm a former NFL athlete, playing in the league, I always great clients, that would have turned you off so fast. Like, damn, this is a fucking asshole over here, man. That's all he talks about is himself. Guys, that is where most people in business drop the ball. They continue to talk about themselves and they don't create value and they just don't sit back and listen. That's the simplest thing in the world. You meet somebody new, figure out what is their mission? What is their problem? What are their issues? How can you help? When you start talking about how you can fix something, you might be fixing the wrong damn thing. You don't know that. So listen to that person first. Be very authentic. Be different. That's what's going to get you the sale in life, man. Being different. Everybody talks first. You be different and listen first. Talk second. See how it works. I promise you, you're going to have a great outcome. And they create value. Real value. Okay? That's what I'm talking about. Short story about LinkedIn and sales. <clears throat> One of my best clients is PNC Bank. Met their senior VP of the bank. He saw a post of mine on LinkedIn about, if, this is what I said the post was, if you don't bet on yourself, why would anybody else? He saw that post. He's having a meeting with the bank CEO. Mm -hmm. Sent me a note afterwards. Marcia had a great meeting with the, with the bank CEO and president. You don't know me. I read your posts. I follow you. And I think you're great. I said, let's have a conversation just to kind of hear more about you. Had a conversation. Never did I pitch him on selling about my speaking, never. He hits me up about five, six weeks later, Mark, I see what you're doing. There's an opportunity to speak at our corporate headquarters. Are you interested? And it's been everything since I've done three jobs with them in the last 90 days. Because I listened to Josh and I did not try to sell him, right? I created value for Josh because he knew I was a different kind of guy. That I wasn't trying to sell him right away. I created that value and we became good friends and now I work a lot of things for PNC Bank because we became friends. 
That is the number one thing with prospecting, guys, is identify, connect, listen, create value. Okay? Next slide, Mike. Turning prospects into clients. Number one, present social proof. Who have you worked with? Who have you helped? What makes you different? Present that proof to them. Let them know that what you are doing is viable, is credible, and it's real. So many people want to try to go and push a, their price first. Well, am I gonna, how am I gonna how, how am I gonna pay y'all if you're any good? So present your social proof. Then present your pricing. Okay? After that, then present your pricing. And then give them ample time to make an informed decision. Guys, when you are trying to get a business meeting with an owner or something like that, always, always, always press for a date and a time. Don't say, let's meet in a couple weeks. Okay, fine. You hit them up the next week. Well, you said a couple weeks. I'm not ready today. Hmm. Give them a day and a time. People, when you leave an open end or something like that, people will never take you seriously. Because you're not trying to set an actual meeting, you're trying to just play house. Like, hey, let's meet sometime. Okay, great. I'll get around to it. Or how about we meet next Wednesday, 10.30 a.m. to discuss me working with you as a potential client and, as, and helping you provide that value to your business. It's a lot better. Anybody have any questions on this one? On this slide? I think it's pretty straightforward on this one. Next. And then the next one, guys, retaining clients. Effective communication. Continue to create value. Be a true partner. Like with PNC, Josh and I talk all the time. He invited me to go watch the Dolphins-Jaguars game December 23rd. He's a Dolphins fan. I'm a former Jaguars player. This could be interesting. But I'm definitely going to the game. Okay? But again, we, we, Josh and I talk probably once or twice a week. What's going on? How things going? How the family? How the kids? Communication, creating value. I've become a true partner of PNC Bank. Why can't you do the same thing with your business? Find someone. Become a, they become your client. Communicate with them consistently. Continue to create value authentically. And then become their partner in reality. If you can do this, you will retain clients consistently. This is where people drop the ball because they get the contract signed with somebody. Like, oh, that's all right. We got them in the bag. Off to the next. You forget, like we talked about, that client will refer you to more if you treat them right. And that is where most sales come from. Someone that you've worked with likes your service, likes your authenticity, respects that you respect them, and they continue to give you more business. But if your house isn't in order, you gotta take care of people in your house, you're in trouble. You're just in trouble, okay? But this is something, guys, that it's about 80% of business owners that retain clients do these steps. The ones that don't lose clients, and when you start to lose clients, you lose spinoff work. When you lose spinoff work, you start trying to find anything to fill that uh, that re that revenue um, that revenue scale. That's the way life is. Any questions on that? Does that make sense, to everybody? Yeah, I think one thing to add, like just um, as far as we're concerned, just to make it uh, clear, is like this is not only like a client that you close out coming to our care, but like business to business stuff. I think this actually probably pertains to even more. This, this is oh I'm I'm sorry great yeah. clarity you got yeah, it. I mean it, 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 it's obviously it's for both but, but it's but more. but no it's gonna be for it's gonna be more for business yeah. because they are the ones that are gonna gonna give you the consistent spinoff work B two B is your market B two C is nice but B two B by far you have to do this if you're doing this with the businesses the owners all those people. Yeah. That will continue to give you that spinoff work. Yeah, I think we do a really good job like on a per client basis, and we could definitely use work from a B2B perspective. Go ahead. I think Mikey's clarifying because we call our patients clients. Yeah. Right, so, okay. So, meaning accounts. 
Right. Yes, mm-hmm. we're all talking about accounts when when we're reading what you say clients, mm-hmm. you mean accounts. Okay, and so it's the, just a, a little nuance of yeah, like what the language. No, this is this is right? good because it's like yeah, no. it's important that again the 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 accounts who are the the actual patients clients, clients mm-hmm. then the businesses that are helping you to grow that yeah. business right. are viable. Because those are the ones that are going to help you get to other businesses mm-hmm. that can send you a multitude of clients to help you have a thriving business. Yep. Again, as a business owner, if you all would have came to me with my construction company telling me how you can help my guys clean their life up, I'd get every business in the world. I don't know what the cost is, but I'd have paid it. Because I want my guy, I would want my guys who were hooked on alcohol, who were drinking on the weekends, who were who were smoking dope on the weekends. I don't want them to get their life cleaned up, big time. So as a guy who owned a construction company and over eighty percent of my employees I knew had addiction problems on the weekends, but it's so hard to find guys in construction who don't have that issue. Yeah. It's so hard, and my guys were good on the job. I had to work with it. But if I could have helped them clean up their life at a cost I could have paid for for them to get that help, I'd have paid it all day long. All day long. So I'm telling you, if you all approach me with this type of magnitude, with this type of you know, structure, you'd have got my business. And I would have sent you other construction companies with other guys as well. So that's a very good point to add, to bring into that, that habit. Like, like, this is B2B and then B2 accounts, as you call that. Okay, next. Acronym sales. No. Next opportunity. Acronyms for sales. If you hear the word no, don't get discouraged. Don't get upset. Don't get disheartened. Keep pushing forward. Okay? Fail. First attempt in learning. We all make mistakes. Trust me. I'm sitting here telling you as a guy that lost it all. I made mistakes. Lost it all. I made mistakes after mistakes after mistakes. But learn from the ones that you've made to go push forward. Okay? Win. Welcome your internal network. People right in this room. Have a strong relationship with them and a strong bond. Okay? Work. Winners optimize research and knowledge. LinkedIn. Internet. Google. People. Comfort zone. Stepping out of your comfort zone. Finding ways to get new B2B clients and new B2C or B2A clients is paramount. You have to have sales in order to maintain any business. If there's no sales, there's no revenue, there's no business. Trust me. Been there. Lost it all. So learn from me. Okay? It works in your lingo as well. Okay? Team. Teachable. E, engage. A, adaptable. Get that LinkedIn account going. <laughs> M, motivated, which I told you earlier, motivation is into inspiration. Okay? Motivation is going to be inspiring others through true inspiration. Okay? Next. Um, this is, I got two more slides, guys, and this is one from Coach Del Rio. I don't know why it's not pulling up, but it doesn't matter. In order to succeed in life, you must be your own CEO. Plain and simple. You can go out there and sell the world. You can go out there and make excuses. Got I was at my hotel, little hotel. The hotel going this morning, I work out seven days a week. Went to that hotel room, that gym was a piece of shit. <laughs> no weights. Nothing. Just a little, a little car, a little, little uh, treadmill, a little, uh, in, uh, little cross country machine, whatever the hell they call it, and a bike. I can say, you know what? Nah, I'm good. Nothing here. I was making excuses and say, and say, screw it. Or I can get my, hop my big ass on the damn treadmill, and get an hour's cardio in, and then go home. Or go, no, go to what do what I do? Took option B. So again, you can make, you can, you can make excuses all day long. You can say, you know what? I'm tired. No, that client said no. I'm just gonna stop for the day. But I'm gonna tell you what: you keep making excuses, eventually it shows through the light. You can't hide forever. You can't hide forever, ladies and gentlemen. And if you don't get out there and try something new, get innovative, get different, get unique, you're always gonna be behind the eight ball in sales. I don't give a damn how nice a person you are. If you're not out there marketing yourself. 
If you're not marketing, how can anybody know you exist? They don't know you exist. Plain and simple. Next slide. My final thought. Next slide. It's pretty straightforward. It's pretty straightforward. I'm not gonna sit here and dance with you. I'm not gonna sit here and try to like rah rah you, because that's just not what I do. But I'm gonna tell you I know it works. If you can master prospecting, turning prospects into clients, and retaining clients, and B2B and B2C, you're going to be good. You're going to sell. Guys, I'm going home tonight, fly home, get home at like 10.30, wake up tomorrow morning at 9 a.m., I am on my way to Vegas to speak on the same stage as Hussein Bolt and Kathy Ireland, who's a $500 million a year real estate guru. And five and a half years ago, I'm almost homeless. What does that tell you? I can sell anything to anybody, but you have to sell in a way that people want to buy your product. You, people have to believe in you. And again, this is my second job with them, going out to Vegas, and they pick up everything paying me a great fee, I'm going on stage, and there for five days, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, fly home Sunday. They got everything on them. And you know what? They know I can bring value to their people. I will hopefully brought value to you with this. Because again, I'm telling you, it's a proven method. You can, have, you can prospect well, turn prospects into clients well, and retain clients well, you will always have a viable, growing business. It's just commonality. But again, a couple of thick key things. Number one, the three biggest things I hope you take from the day. Number one, listen first. That's the number one thing in sales that's gonna get you over the top. Listen first. Number two is create real value. <clears throat> real value. Not just be someone that's like, kind of talking to the like real value. Like you asked me about LinkedIn, I'm not very comfortable. Okay, you know what, man? You can call me anytime. If you have a problem with LinkedIn, I would gladly say, hey, man, look, this is what I did, how I grew it. You want some help? Anytime. Give me out anytime. Anytime. Because <laughs> 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 here's the thing. What day and what time? Hey, <laughs> hey, hey call, me, call, me on uh, call me next Tuesday. <laughs> we'll give you my number. Okay, I'm just, guys, I'm serious. Like, this is what I'm talking about. Like, create the value. Like, I'm not looking at this to kind of <clears throat> speak and be gone from you guys. Because I'm very, I'm going to tell you like this, this is probably the most comfortable I've been around a group as far as the way I can relate and connect with them in a long time. And I'm telling you, I was exactly sitting in the seat five years ago, what am I going to do? How am I going to sell this thing? I said, shit, man, I must go ahead. I must try to sell something. But I was selling the wrong way. I would always talk first. I was not, in, I was not into creating that. I was like, what can, what can you give me? And then I was, the number three thing you need to do is be a true partner. Be a partner to your B2As and your B2Bs. If they see a true partnership, even if your price is higher, they will always go to you. Guys, people pay me a lot of money to speak or to coach them because they know the value they get from me is better than someone who's like fired off to speak. You get what you pay for. But if people know and trust and you're a partner, they will pay you a double the price if necessary. Because all they want to do is get the, the job done right. That's all sales is. That's all sales is. Get people to like you, get people to trust you, and then deliver on your product, and everybody wins. Any questions, guys, before we have interactive activities? The activities aren't going to be very long. Uh, you have a question? No. OK. Anybody have a question? Yeah. Uh, real quick, if you go back to that one screen that had like identify, listen, yeah, can yeah. we go can back you, to can that? Can you send us this? Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, of course I can. Like, of course I can. Because I have a specific, yeah. so you were saying like when you owned the Baltimore building, Baltimore? Yeah. That's what I was, that you would have wanted our help yes. with your employees. Yes. What part in that phase, like how, if I'm calling you to say like, you know, I you, don't, you want me to listen instead of talk. So I'm going to do some kind of consultation mm -hmm. style mm -hmm. questions with you to find out what your need is or your pain. Your guys are calling out so of work. Me, it's costing you money so, at job sites. 
what kind of prospecting would work with you as the owner if you still own that? Like, okay. how would you still so, to walk through? So here's what's going to happen. You're going to identify me as your potential client, right? right? Got it? Connect with me, <clears throat> either social media, either an introduction, something like that, okay? First thing you do, this is first thing you do is, hi, my name is Jessica, right? Mm -hmm. My name is Jessica. I'm with All Behavioral Health. Can you tell me a little bit about your company? What's going on with your with your guys? What are some issues that your guys are having on the job, but more importantly, off the job? Mm -hmm. And then stop. Mm -hmm. So when you're you're not what I mean by talking versus telling everybody about yourself. Mm -hmm. You ask me what is going on with your brand. How can I help you? But until you you can't help me until I, until I tell you. So you need to ask me. Mr. Ogden, Marcus, whatever, mm -hmm. how can, what is the issues that you and your guys are having on the job and off the job? Mm -hmm. Then let me talk. Mm -hmm. After I talk, then comes you create that value. Mm -hmm. Say, so Mr. Ogden, our program is designed to help guys who have narcotic problems and addiction problems with this, 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 and this. Here are some social proof companies that we work with, guys that we've helped to help get to that point. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to say, okay, this sounds great. What's your price? Give me your pricing. Mm -hmm. And then when it's time to close that deal, you're either, I'm even going to tell you, hey, Jessica, call me on Monday at 8 o'clock. You can call me Tuesday for real at 10. Uh, you'll call me, okay? Or if you don't get a time from me, say, Mr. Austin, can we talk, let's say, net and always tell us to give them a week. Mm -hmm. A week is ample time to make a decision. Two weeks is too long. Mm -hmm. Complaints is too short. Mm -hmm. And so let's say it's on a Tuesday. Can I call you next Tuesday at 11 a.m. to talk about us maybe working together or collaborating with the brand, with our brands? You'll probably still be on the phone with me. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Does that make sense? Yeah, thank you. But, and, and here's the thing, like, I mean, so like, So let's say because you're the owner of that. Mm -hmm. And like you were saying, you were kind of like up there getting complacent. Yep. That's what you were identifying. I and was, you had yep. a lot going on. Yeah. Say you brushed me off to your HR manager. Huh? Would you have done that? Like, because, you know, don't take no. So say you're like, ah, uh, you could call Martina. No. But like, I don't deal Here, with that. Here's the thing. When it comes to addictions but, with, with companies, yeah. the owner <laughs> is going to step in and get that done. That's not an HR issue. Right. That's going to, when you talk about you know, that, you're over, that's over HR. Because okay. HR really cannot do anything with guys that's not within the workplace. So I can't worry about your life at home, but as an owner of a company mm -hmm. who wants to see his guys authentically be well, mm -hmm. that's my area. Okay. Makes sense? Yeah. That's my area. Because yeah. if, if, you're, if, if you're, you're talking to HR, that could be a conflict issue, that could be a legal issue. I don't want that, so you need to come talk to me. Yeah, okay. Makes cool. sense? thank you. Yep. Anybody else have a question on anything before we do our exercise? Really? Mike, you got something? Um, no, not really. I think, no, good. Anybody else? All right, so here's what we're going to do real fast, guys. I got, I got a couple of little breakout exercises. They're going to be real, real quick. But here's the thing. We're also going to have like a little team that's going to break me up into different teams, okay, to work on a project. The first one's going to be individual by yourself, and the second one will be like with a team. What I'm trying to do is get you all to start thinking about things in your individual life. So now that you have these great techniques that you can do, it's time to start thinking about putting them on paper and into action. Because guys, here's what I tell you all the time. Something that's in your mind, it's not to me, it's not real. When I want something to be real, I write it down so I can see it. If I can see it, I can attack it. If, I, if it's in my mind, it can get jumbled up. Like you said, like, I'll patch off the edge. It can get so jumbled up, I don't remember. So writing it down makes it real. That makes sense? All concepts are delusions, my man, without action, right? I love it. You have to have an action. You have to have a take a step. <laughs> you just called me. That. That's pretty good, dude. That was nice. I'm listening to you. Yeah. No, no, no. I said that's great. No, that's like, that's what I'm saying. Like, if you, if so many people, what's, I, I, you told me your first name. What's our Jordan. 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 So many people say, oh, I want to be, I dream big. I want to achieve, I want to achieve that. I say, well, what is your action plan? They're like, I don't know. Like, well, how are you gonna get there? How are you gonna get there? Like, when I came home from my school moment, I wrote down what I wanted to be as a speaker. How I was gonna get there. How I was gonna achieve it. 
people who say I want to, I have this big dream, I have no action plan, you're just dreaming. These are conversations that I have with guys every day that we want with our actions, you know. And if you're not doing, then then you don't want what you're telling me that you want. Exactly. Dreams without action are hallucinations. Yep. Yep. Wow. <laughs> Boom. Boom. Should be a speaker, dog. We got a lot of. Uh, we'll talk about this. Yeah, we got a lot of blossoming uh, motivational speakers. Here's the thing, man. You. Inspirational speaking. Yeah. That's what, that's what I'm talking about. I was going to say, is anybody going to catch that? But I was gonna leave it. Nice. Here's the thing, man. You just have to be, like, like just be authentic and be yourself. Be genuine. Be genuine. Thank you. Be who you are. Be who you are. Some people like it, some people don't. That's, that's right. Okay. They don't like it, they don't like it. I got lots of people don't there's like it. There's a woman who's, her, she's a, <laughs> Her name is Mel Robbins. She's a phenomenal speaker. Okay? If you want her time, it's $50,000 for an hour. Okay? She is my mentor. And she told me, Marcus, people aren't always going to like you. But if you're true to yourself and to your morals and your beliefs, it's all that really matters. Her name is Mel Robbins. Mel Robbins. Huh? No, I thought the same thing when I first met her, but no, she's not. Now, he gets $125,000 an hour. Yeah. Yeah. That's 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 he gets $125,000 an hour. He's the, oh, he's the, he's the guru. Well, as you say, he's not your guru. I'm not your guru. Right. Not your guru. But so Mel mentors me. So she's regarded as the top speaker in the world female. Tony's the male. They have the same last name. Not yes, related. crazy. Not related at all. It's crazy. But like, <laughs> hashtag not born in Robin. Right. But, again, but, that, but the thing is, guys, we that, here's the thing. But seven years ago, seven years ago, she was flat broke. She was she was drunk. She was on it, and she wrote the. She had a she had a vision. Five, four, three, two, one. And wrote the book. Five second rule. And it became. She sold over ten million copies. You do the math. Yeah. How much money she's made? A couple of hours. <laughs> <laughs> so, but again, man, yeah, she's doing all right. Yeah, she's doing all right for a job. Yeah, yeah. I mean, because what's what? What is it about you? Why would you come here? Oh yeah, my life's just been good the whole time. Dude, you know, now I'm here. Dude, no. I was the biggest drunk. I was the biggest freaking just. I I sat on the couch for about three months after I went broke and said, "Damn, this man, who's gonna feel sorry for me?" And my girlfriend now, my wife said, you either get your big ass off this couch or I'm leaving. I was like, damn. Ultimate. Inspirate, inspired my ass. Yeah. Got my ass up. And now that's what I do. So again, anybody can achieve greatness. But do you have the action plan to get there? And are you going to put the discipline, the investment into it? Now that you know how to help with prospecting, selling, are you going to put it into action? Because I'm telling you, it works. If it didn't work, I wouldn't be here. That's just real. That's just real talk. First thing I told him, I said, "Look," he and I, he's like, "Man, I hope it's not about leadership." I said, "Mike, you have to be a great leader to sell, but you have to have a, there's an art to selling. There's an art, man. Mm -hmm. If you don't learn the steps of how to sell people, you will always just be average <coughs> all day." I've met Mel Robbins. I've worked with her. I'm going to eventually meet Tony Robbins one of these days. Sit him down and maybe coach him. <laughs> <laughs> or, get, or get coached by him. Oh, if you want to get coached by him, by the way, for half hour consultations, $100,000. Half hour consultation, $100,000. Who needs coaching that can afford $100,000? <laughs> I'm telling you, so Tony Robbins is the type of dude to probably dude, take you to the next level. He's coached Usher. Yeah. He's coached Pitbull. Yeah. He's coached uh, Kobe Bryant. Yeah. He's what coached on how to be a better person Ooh. themselves. Yeah, it's, uh, attitude yeah. test. Mr. Worldwide. Right. 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 We knew he was going to LA. Everybody was mad. He's like, oh, dude, you have Arnold Schwarzenegger sending you a freaking like, welcome to LA video. I mean, come on, man. That was good. That was, was, good. That was, good. That was good. That was good. Yeah. That was good. He was like, yo, okay. LeBron, welcome to LA. Like, he knew he was going to LA. We knew it. I mean, 
mean, I mean, nothing wrong with Cleveland or like Houston, but I mean, it's LA, man. I mean, and who's Tony Robbins' best friend? Peter Gruber, who owns the uh, Golden State Warriors. One of my one of my good friends from childhood. Talk about sales. One of my best friends from childhood. Played in the NBA for 13 years. Won a, won a uh, NBA championship with the Spurs. You know who his two investors are in his new business that he sold on his company? Tony Robbins, Peter Gruber. They both put in two million dollars into his new business. Okay, the day's worth of work for them. <laughs> so again, <laughs> this is all about selling, guys. It's all about selling. <laughs>